Hello, Priya and Husky here. Before we get into this podcast episode, I would like to state that I was sick and that there is a lot of deep grieving that is happening. So, um, I'm sorry. I think we all know it wouldn't be something recorded by me if it wasn't somewhat scuffed. Without further ado, enjoy the podcast episode and whatever chaos it might bring. Hello, weird people, and welcome back to the Chaos Podcast. Here we are, once again, discussing the internet and its chaos, positives, and negatives. If we don't remember what this podcast is about, it's addressing the content creation, my experience, to the impact that COVID had on the internet, to the positives and negatives that we see on a daily basis. During the podcast, I will be expressing my opinion, which can be different from others. It's also going over my viewers' opinions based on questions I've asked and minimum research that I've done. And most of this is my own opinion, and it's okay not to agree with it. If you don't agree with it, that's fine. Leave a comment, express your own opinion. Today, we're more addressing the internet's algorithm. And if you haven't heard what the algorithm room is, well, we're explaining it. So, let's get into it. The impact on the internet on our mental health has greatly increased since COVID. Why? Because social isolation, and we relied heavily on the internet. Coming out of COVID, we've mostly still adapted to the internet. Most of us haven't gone back to the normal that pre-COVID was. Back then, we were able to socialize with people face-to-face, go to conventions, and talk freely. Today, it's a lot different. 2020 as a whole affected the world in a whole different way beyond COVID. COVID isolated us, but it also built new relationships and a way to bring us together. When I'm talking about bringing us together, I mean things like the Black Lives Matter movement and other protests that happened during 2020. There was a lot of things that stirred up everyone globally, and it was because it was all shared on the internet. The internet was the resource, and due to the fact that everyone was on the internet, everyone learned about it. COVID has entered a new system into the chat, and that is socializing online, and it's made it easier than ever to put in our personal information into the internet. Personal information like credit card numbers, and social security numbers, and our birthdays, and where we live, and a whole lot of other information that when we were younger, we were told never to share. It is a normal thing. Like, for example, saying normal things within the internet. Back then, it used to be, don't get in cars with strangers, or don't meet up with strangers on the internet by yourself. Today, now we have sharing apps, ride sharing apps, like Uber, that is inviting us to go into cars with strangers from the internet. And it's crazy to think about. We have to find new ways to socialize with friends since COVID, and now we've met friends that aren't even around us. This allows us to chat with complete strangers, and it can be dangerous if you're not careful. You may ask, what do I mean by dangerous? And there's a lot of things. Instead of now being cyberbullying, going through comments, it can now be verbal. And verbal abuse is a thing. All of it can be done online now, and it now poses a new problem for law enforcement as well. And what I mean by it brings a new problem for law enforcement is that as much as we do share a lot of information on the internet, we've now come up with more and more ways to hide our information on the internet. And now, if something happens online, it can be incredibly hard to enforce the law. Chatting bases like Discord, Messenger, Zoom, Skype, VR chat, and so many more have been introduced and improved on greatly since COVID. With these chatting services in mind, other things have improved like VPNs and malware software, which have prevented people from getting hacked, but it also prevents people from stealing your identity. But at the same time, on the opposite side of it, it also prevents us law enforcement and other agencies from finding out who is causing problems, who is saying things that are threatening and can increase a threat level. Like, for example, school threats. Most people don't even know where the threat is actually coming from or if it's actually a threat because most of the school threats now come from online. For example, there was a large mass panic online because of a TikTok post saying that 
everyone was going to shoot up schools in the middle of September. But some of that didn't actually happen. And there was no real threat. It was just a threat made online that no one could figure out who. Most people had to stay home and kids denied to go to school because of these TikToks. That is just one example of law enforcement having a problem and justice needing to be served, but there's no way of us knowing where it's coming from. And to today, there are school threats that are being made because people think they can get away with it because they're hiding their identity on the internet. And so there is a massive problem when it comes to that. Sharing information about ourselves can't be any easier, especially with online shopping, where it's common to put in your credit card information. One thing that people may relate to greatly is TikTok, Reels, and YouTube Shorts. I'm sure you've sat there for hours scrolling endlessly for funny animal videos, study tips, cooking videos, storytelling, news, and so much more. And some of that is not true, especially on news outlets, which has changed the political view on a lot of Americans. It's allowed us to see more of the world, and it's all just on one small device. You can sit there for ages, scrolling, without even realizing it. But why? Well, it's distracting your brain. It's taking things that we enjoy and using an algorithm to figure out more things that we might enjoy and continuing to use them. What is the algorithm? Well, it's a way social media can track us. It recommends you more similar content from things we like, like if you like a dog video, you might see more videos about dogs, puppies, cats, and more. It also has a dislike system, so if you dislike a certain type of content, it will stop showing you that kind of content. Everything kind of uses a system, whether it be on YouTube, Spotify, Pandora, so many things, including social media outlets like Facebook and Instagram. But that's more rating each other at that point. That can take a mental toll if you post something online and it doesn't get a lot of likes, especially if you're used to getting a lot of likes. It could be mentally degrading. What I mean by mentally degrading is that the internet now has become more of a mental game, especially for people who are popular. For this episode, I asked my chat, how has the internet mentally affected you? And due to the fact that none of them stated that they wanted to be anonymous or not anonymous, they are all remaining anonymous for safety reasons of my own. Answering my own question, the internet has been a great resource. It has helped me learn so many new things and meet so many new people and expand upon my social skills. I would say that overall, between the time I have started using the internet more often, my social confidence has grown exponentially. Although at the same time, it has decreased in more real world settings. I can notice myself getting a little bit more panicky and overthinking some of my conversations. It's easier to hide on the internet and pretend to be someone you're not. And when it comes to real life, it's harder to do that. As stated by some of my viewers, the internet has a lot of unnecessary drama and it's everywhere. And I can agree with that. My definition is explaining it like a high school setting. Everything has its high school arc. It has the peace, the friendly, the good moments, the happy moments, and it has the unnecessary drama, something that may not be true and is gossip-filled. So I would say it has a high school standpoint. Some of my chatters have also stated that the internet has become addicting, which is something that is more and more true by the day, especially with resources like TikTok that can distract your mind for long periods of time, it can be addicting. And with shopping being easier than ever, it's easier to spend more and more money on things that you might not necessarily need, like impulse buying. The internet can also cause sleeping problems, as when you make these new friends, you want to spend time talking to them, but everybody is not necessarily in the same time zone, so sometimes some people stay up later just to talk to their friends, which is becoming a greater issue among amongst teenagers trying to get more sleep for school and is degrading their sleep schedules. Quoting something that one of my chatters say, they say, Not everything on the internet has done good to me, though. It is a place where I can easily get hurt by people if I am not in the right mood. Not can 
I be affected by what people say directly, but also f uh, scrolling on, for example, Instagram reels. I have come across a reel with a certain mood behind it. It can quickly get into your head and heart and turn a happy mood straight to depressing and a feeling that more people don't want to experience. Furthermore, although it isn't really directly mentally, it has also affected things such as sleep schedule, which makes it more difficult to stay happy all the time and affects them mentally. Sleep is very important, especially when it comes to mental health. So with the easier chatting branches, like I have stated before, it can degrade your mental health. It causes sleep insomnia, anxiety, depression, and so much more. Most of my chatters agree on the fact of sleep issues. I myself can also agree with the chat about sleep issues. I have found myself in the past staying up until 2 or 3 a.m. on school nights just to talk to people. And it's not necessarily healthy, especially for the next day when I do not have enough sleep to function. It can also affect you very mentally depending on what people tell you. Everybody can be slightly manipulative and that things they can do... Everybody can be slightly manipulative, which means they may try to convince you of doing something you don't want to do. So it's great to know- the internet is a great place, but it's great to know how to stand your ground, especially with the word no. Now going back to the algorithm. The algorithm can be used in other ways too, like helping business convince you to buy things. The algorithm can be used to be very manipulative. The algorithm also helps content creators like myself. You can find- you may have found this video on your recommended page, or in other methods, but usually it's via your homepage or your recommendations. This is because of the algorithm. You like other content that is similar to my content, and so it recommends it to you. Content creators also find other ways to get you to click on their videos, which there are two very main things. Titles and thumbnails. If we look at my own my page, you can see that there are two very different types of titles, dramatic and informative. Most of the different titles were different from the original title it was during the stream. As you may all notice, I keep one keyword in most of my videos, and that is the word VOD. VOD stands for Video On Demand, and usually this is because I am importing videos from my Twitch page onto my YouTube for you all to watch and continue watching for a, whenever you want. Unlike on Twitch, where eventually that video will disappear if I don't upload it. Most of them have different titles based off of the type of video it is, whether it's dramatic, story building, or many more. My type of content is mostly 5M. 5M content can have a large variation of titles that may pull in their viewers. Most of your thumbnails are usually showing off things like the cars, items in the server, and other things, mostly your character. My titles though were very simplistic. If we look at my most popular video title, it is named SAF Flashed Fire VOD number 70. This title tells you what I am playing aka the community I'm in. For those of you who are watching who do not know what SAF is and what that community is, it is a 5M community that is based off a of first responder roleplay that is normally very, very realistic, at least to the best realistic possible it can be while still remaining fun. It's mostly building your story and playing these characters. That's what SAF is, if you don't know. Now, going back to the title, the number of VOD it is, but also in the middle, it gives you a sample of what happened in that video. And specifically in Flash, that video is about my character and the battalion chief, and as we get flashed in a building that is highly unstable trying to assist in the mayday. My least popular video is called SAF Tired Talk and Afina Jewels, Civ VOD number 54. Why is this title not so successful than others? One, it's very long and not very interesting compared to the first title where it's named Flashed. Flash tells you that we got flashed and if you're a more in the firefighter things, you would know that flashes can be highly dangerous and are very dramatic. 
Tired of talking to Fiona Jules doesn't really hold that type of energy. And not only that, but it's also a civilian VOD. Which means I'm not doing anything in the relation of the fire department or any LEO department in this community. The title doesn't also tell you much about what happens in the video. In the video, I am mostly talking to one of my character's friends, trying to get support and try to figure out things for a mental problem. Athena Jules, it doesn't tell you anything much either about the character. In fact, the character only made a few appearances. The main focus of the video is my main character. There are other video titles, though, that also do carry popularity that I have, like... Like Moon Goes Down, when my character goes down because of exposure to a drug that we did not know that was in the vehicle. Or another video that is a lot more longer but actually holds a thumbnail, The Unpredictable County, SAF Fire VOD number 34. This video is mostly being very unpredictable as we learn truths about the new my character and other things that happen. But of course, we're not here to analyze my content, we're here to discuss the internet. So. What about other content creators? Well, look at other content creators similar to mine. Like, maybe, One Ocean 10. You, if you watch my content, most likely know this character. And you can tell that some things work out a lot better. With his most popular content being the Fire Dog, with SAF 147, Fire Dog Causing Problems. But there's other titles, like Left for Dead, SAF... 233 or 30 yeah 33 that is the character being shot and put in the water there's different titles that grab other people's attention and maybe you don't watch saf exactly and so maybe you need a different example so what's a common example we can use well mr beast mr beast uses a lot of thumbnails and things and things that look very dramatic these dramatic thumbnails may get you to click a moral Things that are expensive get shown. So forth, so on. Some of Mr. Beast's popular content is things like Squid Games in Real Life, based off of a TV show that got very popular over COVID. Or Last to Leave the Circle. Or $1 versus half a million dollar plane ticket. These are common forms of content we see nowadays on YouTube. And it's popular content. And people like to copy these types of content so that they can also get the same amount of views. Although, depending on the execution of it, doesn't really mean that it's always going to be popular. Thumbnails are a whole different element. They're the thing that you will most likely see before you click on a video. Titles are important too, as it gives a summary of what your video can may include, but thumbnails also give your viewer a look into what your video is about. Looking at a thumbnail, you can tell that the, there is a main element. For example, within my content, you can see brush trucks, fire engines, ambulances, police cars, conversations with other people, group photos, so on, so forth, that show you, that, show you what my character is doing for that video. There's a lot of things that take into account when it comes to the algorithm. The algorithm goes for a lot, and one thing that I feel the algorithm algorithm sorts by is three categories real life storytelling and gaming there's a difference between all three of these but every video fits in one of those three categories real life can be your politics news outlets vlogs blogs how to do something educational videos animations about storytelling fit under storytelling things like 5m content can be storytelling Something that has a script behind it, or no script at all. Or something that tells a story. Something that can be highly addicting for some people. To know what happened. It's like a book. Or gaming. Most content you can see now is about gaming and content creation game. When thinking about games, I usually think of Let's Plays for gaming. Something that is directly only focused on the content of the game. There are some content though that does fit in all three categories. For example, like a video I had mentioned earlier is Mr. Beast's Squid Game video. This fits in all three categories. It has the game element from all the games. It is real life, as is real life people competing against each other. And it is t storytelling because it is telling a story of how these people got here and how they succeeded or failed. 
Today in this podcast, we mostly address the algorithm and the importance between titles and thumbnails. We also address the mental health behind the internet and how it has affected us, especially as we grow to use it more and more often. Thank you for watching, and I will all see you in the next episode. Good night, good evening, and good morning.